Coming up next on Eyewitness News at 5, the day of reckoning is here. Susan Smith heads to court to face charges of killing her two young sons. We'll have a live report. Also, Arnell Simpson takes the stand in the defense of her father in the latest phase of the murder trial of the century. And find out why these Rochester parents are throwing a party despite the fact there's a child molester on the loose. Eyewitness News at 5 is next. The following broadcast of Eyewitness News is closed captioned for the hearing impaired. Now, from WKBW-TV News Channel 7, here's Keith Ranford and Kathleen Layton with Eyewitness News at 5. She stands accused of a shocking crime. And now, the woman accused of killing her two young sons faces death threats and the death penalty. Susan Smith goes to trial. Good evening, I'm Kathleen Layton. And I'm Keith Ranford. Our top story tonight, if you follow the story from its mysterious beginning to its tragic end, you remember Susan Smith. She is a South Carolina mother who accused a stranger of carjacking her and kidnapping her two young sons. Later, Smith buckled and admitted to drowning the little boys in a nearby lake. Smith was last seen at her home shortly before 5.30 on October 25th. She decided to drive around town, and then she was allegedly carjacked at a stoplight. In fact, she confessed later to driving seven miles up the road to a lake. We go now live to South Carolina. It's been a long day for the many people inside and outside the courthouse. This trial is charged with emotion, and with no cameras allowed, Often we wait and wonder to see how far along the jury selection process is taking or whether Susan Smith is competent to stand trial. 147 jurors came in buses to the Union County Courthouse this morning where 23-year-old Susan Smith stands accused of drowning her two young sons last fall. Her ex-husband, David Smith, came to court wearing pictures of his sons and says he wants Susan to die for the crimes she confesses. Of the jurors already excused, 14 men and one woman were allowed to go simply because they've committed crimes in the past. Jury selection will move along until 12 are seated. Attorneys speculate that could take at least two weeks. This woman's husband could end up serving. His attitude is that someone has to do this, and if he's chosen, then he'll assume that responsibility. How do you feel about him doing it? Would you want to be in his shoes? No, not really. But I pray that he will have the guidance from above to do what's best for all concerned. Smith came to court this morning dressed as she has for the past six months, but at her attorney's side in the courtroom, she wore a conservative blue suit. Dozens of townspeople jockeyed for a seat in the crowded courtroom, trying to see for themselves how this real-life drama is unfolding. This is so uh, uh, personal to us, you know, living here, that, and I can't, I just want to get a sense of, of uh, what it's all about, what her motives were, and, and why she did such a terrible thing. That man, Roger Wade, and many others have actually taken time off from work to be first-hand spectators in the case. At this hour, the remaining potential jurors, all attorneys, and Susan Smith herself remain inside the courtroom. In Union, South Carolina, I'm Susan Christensen. Now back to you. All right, Susan, thanks for the story. Now, one of our newest staff members at Eyewitness News has a unique connection to the Susan Smith case, and you will see it only on 7. Reporter Cynthia Barnes conducted the first interview with Smith the night she said she was carjacked, and she recently won an Emmy Award for that story. Cynthia, take us back to the night you talked to Susan Smith. Well, Kathleen, I was working for a CBS station in Spartanburg, South Carolina, when I met Smith. I talked with her at her parents' house the night she said she was carjacked at gunpoint. I went to her parents' house in October of last year. She was there with her estranged husband, David. Smith says she was driving down the street when she came to a traffic light, and that's when she says she was carjacked. Okay, I was stopped at a red light, and um, just out of nowhere, this black guy came up and we just opened the door and jumped in the car, and he had a gun, and he had it pointed in my side and told me to drive. And so I did. And when I tried to ask him why he was doing this or whatever, he just told me to shut up or he'd kill me. And later you see the video there of officers searching the area around John D. Long Lake. Sheriff Howard Wells, he rushed to the scene that night. And in fact, he was the one who actually filed the police report. 
I'll have more tonight at 6 o'clock on Susan Smith's plea for her children for their safe return and also an interview with David Smith that night. Kathleen? Cynthia, I'm sure you've thought about this many, many times since you did that interview. Did you feel that she was anything but sincere the night you spoke with her? I wanted to believe that she was sincere, Kathleen, that night I did speak with her on October 26th. Really, it was in the early morning hours of the 26th. But I did have, uh, if, if you will, reporter intuition. I wondered if the story really washed. And of course, now we know that Susan Smith has confessed. And of course, you know, um, she will go to trial and then we will decide if they'll decide if she's guilty or innocent. But um, I did think that something was a little fishy about the story. but. As a journalist, that was not my call. Okay. Thanks, Cynthia. We'll look forward to your report at 6. Keith. Another double murder trial capturing national attention, of course, is the O.J. Simpson trial in California. Today, Simpson's defense team began to present its arguments and its first witness. Simpson's adult daughter, 25-year-old Arnell, took the stand today in defense of her father. Eyewitness News reporter Jerry Giordano is in Los Angeles again tonight covering this trial for us. He joins us now live with an update. Jerry? Keith, it's hard to believe that it has been more than one year since O.J. Simpson was accused of the brutal murders of his ex-wife Nicole and her friend Ronald Goldman. Today, his side of the story began unfolding inside Judge Lancito's courtroom, and the first witness to come to the defense of the accused was also the defense's firstborn child. I was born the same day my dad won the Heisman Trophy. O.J. Simpson's daughter from his first wife, Marguerite, went on to contradict many of the images of her father that the prosecution spent the past five months trying to build. Arnell Simpson described O.J. as a caring man who was shocked at the death of his ex-wife. Upset, uh, out of control, distraught, emotional. Had you ever in your life ever heard him like that before? No. And she went on to paint yeah, the accused in sharp that. contrast to the jealous murderer the prosecution has tried to portray. Defense attorney Johnny Cochran used the witness to back up several defense theories. The first, that Simpson's blood was planted at his Brentwood estate. Did you ever see any blood spots in the foyer area of that residence? No. You were out and around the, garage, the driveway area that day, were you? Yes. Did you ever see any blood spots in the driveway area? No. Arnell also denied ever seeing her father wear a dark blue jogging suit, the clothing it is believed the killer wore. And in an attempt to explain why Simpson was running late on his way to the airport around the time of the murders, Arnell told the court O.J. was the family procrastinator. I would always, like, prepare an hour before, and he'll, like, get dressed in the last 15 minutes before we would have to leave. This He's is done this for years. That's something that you've seen as you were growing up? Yes. And it is pretty clear where the defense is going. They are trying to rebunk or refute every one of the images that the prosecution, rather, has portrayed of O.J. Simpson's trial began some five months ago. Whether they will be successful remains to be seen. What we do know is that Arnell Simpson is the first of some 33 witnesses the defense plans to call. Many of them are being fought by the prosecution, so we'll have to see exactly how many of those 33 witnesses actually make it to the witness stand. I'm Jerry Giordano reporting live in Los Angeles. Back to you in Buffalo. Jerry, the wires are saying tonight that... Uh probably the first dozen or so witnesses called by the defense are going to try and paint the picture. Uh, they're friends of O.J. Simpson, painting him as a loving, caring person who was very upset and emotional the night uh, he found out about the murders. Well, what they're trying to do here, I think, is rebunk what the prosecution was able to get out of some of the police officers, that O.J. Simpson did not seem upset the night his wife was killed, didn't even ask why or how she'd been murdered. I think what they're trying to do here is establish the fact that he was upset, perhaps in a state of shock. We'll have to see how that plays out. All right, good. Thanks, Jerry. We'll see you again later. Allegations of mismanaged money and convicted managers are overshadowing the foundation which now bears the name of Nicole Brown Simpson. The charitable organization is said to have raised over $200,000 since its inception. However, that money has yet to be distributed to combat domestic violence. Also, the president of the Nicole Brown Simpson Charitable Foundation is not helping matters too much, apparently. According to the Los Angeles Times today, Jeff Nobel is a convicted felon and an accused wife beater as well. Nicole's father, who now heads the organization, admits that their work has come to a standstill right now. Lou Brown attributes all of these problems to growing pains. Kathleen? President Clinton is revisiting a familiar theme with a family message today in Tennessee. He and Vice President Al Gore attended a family values conference. The president spoke about the ongoing debate over sex and violence in Washington on television. Mr. Clinton said a telecommunications bill pending on Capitol Hill should include a new computer chip that allows parents to screen objectionable this programs. This is not censorship. This is parental responsibility. This is giving parents 
the same access to technology that is coming into your home to all the people who live there who turn it on. So the TV Guardian, the president, is pushing works like this. An infrared remote control programs the TV Guardian box. The TV locks into the Guardian box, and the box plugs into an electrical socket. A microprocessor and a clock work as a timer. Parents can set viewing hours, and the box cuts off the power supply at a given time. If the government starts a rating system, codes will come from the TV. Guardian reads the codes and blocks certain rated shows by cutting off the power supply. Well, not too bad out there today, but where was the warm weather and the sun over the weekend? Hopefully both will be in bloom this week. Linda will be up later with our forecast. But coming up next, Pope John Paul II comes out in defense of women apologizing for the past. We'll explain. And you may remember seeing these strips across the noses of football players. Now find out how they could help you get a good night's sleep. And later, your name doesn't have to be Ken, Skipper, or Barbie to get an invitation to this birthday bash. An American icon is pushing 40. We'll take you to the party. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Kids aren't the only ones in love with Pocahontas. How many, sir? Two, please. It's in theaters everywhere. It's our second time. Third time. Burger King is in love with Pocahontas, too. They've got these great new glasses straight out of Disney's new Pocahontas movie. They're only 99 cents each with any value meal. And they're only at Burger King. Miko and Flick go on the top shelf, dear. Kids aren't the only ones who collect them. Burger King, get your burgers worth. So we had this idea. Why not open a place where people could walk in and get an honest-to-goodness hot meal? It's a place called Boston Market. It's a simple idea, but that's the point. To build a kitchen around ovens instead of microwaves and fryers, where the chicken and turkey are slow roasted so they're juicy and delicious. The ham is double glazed and always tender. Even the meatloaf is double sauced. And the side dishes are freshly prepared and the mashed potatoes are made from scratch. Introducing the new Boston Market. I do it. We all do it. Question is, why do we do it? Because only Darien Lake has thrills so big, like the Predator. You can't help coming back for more. Darien Lake, the fun you keep coming back to. We ride again! What is this? I thought we won. I guess we did. July 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, young, old, and beginners and pros fish for over $130,000 in cash and prizes to benefit Children's Hospital. Pope John Paul II urges the world to knock down obstacles to women's progress. The pontiff says the conditioning of history has been an obstacle to the progress of women, and he apologized for what he called the past marginalization of women. But the pope today held his ground on a Roman Catholic ban on female priests. He defended the ban by noting that Jesus chose men as apostles. The statements were made in a letter meant for women of all faiths worldwide in advance of the September United Nations Conference on Women to be held in Beijing, China. Nearly two dozen people were killed, 32 others hurt, when a Spanish tour bus crashed in southern France. The bus carrying Vatican vacation-bound college students hit a highway divider and then another vehicle after its driver dozed off. Ten of the injured are reported in serious condition tonight. The driver of the bus is being held for questioning. Greenpeace says its ship, the Rainbow Warrior II, suffered structural damage when French commandos raided the vessel in the South Pacific yesterday. Greenpeace was protesting France's plans to resume nuclear testing in the area. Nations in the South Pacific have denounced France's actions as excessive. At least two people are injured when a mail bomb ripped through a high-rise office building in Raleigh, North Carolina today. It happened just before noon at a nine-story building there that houses the offices of a long-distance telephone company. The woman who opened the package was taken to a hospital. She is listed in serious condition tonight. Another woman was able to drive herself to the hospital. Witnesses say the force of the explosion blew a hole through an office wall. 
Agents say that this is not believed to be linked to the case of the Unabomber. The body of a man believed to be a missing Special Olympics athlete from Nepal has been found. Police in Connecticut say now that the body was discovered at the beach where he was presumed drowned four days ago. 21-year-old Ramesh Molly was on an outing at a state park there, and he had gone swimming in an unguarded section of the Long Island Sound. He slipped beneath the water and could not be located. Molly was a soccer player who came to Connecticut to compete in the Special Olympic World Games. It was yet another case of concert mayhem, this time in New York. At least 35 people were hurt in a stampede at a reggae music festival Sunday at Coney Island. Police are investigating reports it was touched off by gunfire. Some of those injured included small children, but medical workers say most of the injuries were minor. No arrests were made. A raging brush fire in Arizona is far from over. More than 14,000 acres of desert has already been scorched by flame. So far, no homes have been lost, but the fire did do millions of dollars in damage to one of the area's most popular parks. With any luck, firefighters hope to have the blaze contained sometime tomorrow. Here at home, we started out with nothing but blue skies out there today. I think Linda is trying to save some of it for the rest of the week as well. Linda? We're going to get some blue skies. We're going to get some very warm weather as well. You know, it could hit 90 again in western New York. I'll be back with the latest AccuWeather forecast. All right, Linda will have the forecast for us in just a minute. Also, later on today, you may have tasted the best of Buffalo over the weekend, but was the food fast a feast or a bust for planters? We'll find out. Don't go away. Now that Pocahontas is playing everywhere, every kid wants to be John Smith. $9.99. Now that school's out, what's a kid to do? How about summer camp? Today was the first day for some area kids' camps. Eyewitness News cameras were out at the Kenton Summer Day Camp where we caught the kids playing a friendly game of dodgeball as well as swimming in the pool. Out at the Sweet Home Middle School Day Camp, swimming was the sport of choice. Area kids' camps offer a variety of activities to keep kids busy and fit during the summer months. Mmm, I love camp. I love to swim. Linda. It's good swimming weather today. Hey, this wasn't bad, and if you think it was a little warm today, actually warmer than the weekend, just wait until, well, probably just a couple days from now, we were really going to get some very hot weather back in western New York. We had our little ham out here a few minutes ago. There he is. Our AccuWeather bunny is back in the garden. Maybe we can shoot him just in a few minutes if he comes a little closer. But let's have a look at the current temperature. Things have been pretty moderate since 3 o'clock this afternoon. We're still holding at about uh, 79 degrees, and 80, I believe, was our high on the day. Humidity still 34 percent so not very uncomfortable at all. Barometric pressure is uh, steady at 29.98. There's the wind, gentle, about 8 miles per hour from the west, and no precip yet. But boy, it sure does look gray out over the lakes, and we could see a couple of thunder showers move into the area. We'll go to our 3D cloud cover, and we'll show you what's happening. First of all, we have a weak frontal system that could bring a thunder shower through western New York anytime between tonight and even tomorrow morning. But I'll tell you, after that moves through, there's nothing much out west that's going to keep the heat from coming into western New York. Take a look at how clear it is out in the Midwest. All the weather out here, while it was on the chilly side even over the weekend, this air right here in the middle of the country has done nothing but sit here and get hotter and hotter. So as it makes its way across the country and through and into western New York, we're really going to notice an increase in temperature. Our area composite radar, again, fairly quiet at this time of the day. We don't see very much on it at all. And our weather eye shows probably the best rain down here in the Gulf. Still a couple of lingering showers out here along the eastern seaboard. But for us, what we are anticipating is high pressure to move in from the Midwest, probably even by tomorrow afternoon. And as that happens, the temperature is going to rise close and maybe even better than 90 degrees, especially by this Thursday and Friday. So we really are going to see some blazing weather back into western New York. Did you think about perhaps not getting that fan or air conditioner? Let me give you good warning <laughs> to go out and make that purchase because a lot of folks are very uncomfortable when it gets that warm. AccuWeather for tonight, again calling for that possibility of a thunder shower around the area. Then after that, partly cloudy skies. Wind from the southwest gentle 6 to 12 miles per hour. Our overnight low 58, so not bad for sleeping. Tomorrow, we start to edge up just a little bit. The high again, 80 degrees, mixture of clouds and sun. A cool breeze and really not a bad day. Then for tomorrow night, the high again, or rather the low, 58 degrees. So no sign of the hot weather until we start to move up on Wednesday. Keith and Kathleen will have more of that for you coming up in a few minutes out here on the weather outside in the five-day forecast. Okay, thanks, Linda. 
Are newborns and new moms spending a little too little time in the hospital? That story is still ahead on Eyewitness News at 5. But first, Mr. Food is going to bring something special to the dinner table tonight. Apple pie in summer? Sounds good, though, doesn't it? Well, it's easy. There's no baking. Uh -uh. I'll never forget it. It was love at first sight. Want to share my Mr. Slush hair? That icy cold taste went right to my head. And all those flavors. Now it's happening all over again with the Misty Cooler. Crushed ice with chunks of real fruit. It's my second love at first sight. The Misty Cooler joins the classic Misty Slush only at Dairy Queen. Hey, set up a sports league for your neighborhood kids and they'll have a weekend activity that's good for them. But mostly, they'll have a lot of fun. And you'll all score big time. So start a team. Or coach one. Good game, Danny. Children first. A public service message brought to you by News Channel 7 and these proud sponsors. So you're running out for a quart of milk. So you still got a stain on that shirt. So what? No one's gonna notice it. You'll slip in, you'll pick up the milk, you'll... You'll be our one millionth customer! Congratulations! <laughs> this is for you! Don't risk it, whisk it. Because whisk gets out even tenacious stains the first time you wash on most everything you wash. So great results are never in doubt. Remember, someone will be seeing what you wash. Don't risk it, whisk it. Take the Quilted Bounty Challenge. Wash the dishes with one sheet. It does jobs I never thought a paper towel could do. Wring it out like a cloth. It's extra durable. Bounty has cloth-like quilting, and it's quicker. It even scrubs the carpet. Ordinary towels fall apart on carpets, even top-quality towels, but Bounty has cloth-like durability. The Quilted Quaker Picker Rubber. Take the Quilted Bounty Challenge. On warm days like this, you probably aren't thinking about heating up your oven for a pie. Well, guess what? Our old buddy, Mr. Food, has come up with a way to beat the heat and have your pie, too. Talk about out-of-season cravings. How about when you want the taste of a real home-baked apple pie now? But we can't because we surely don't want to turn on the oven and mess up the kitchen. But apple pie in the summer is not impossible. Uh-uh. Here's one that's as home tasting as can be, and there's not an oven in sight. Well, look how easy. We beat a cup and a half of cold milk into a package of softened cream cheese until it's smooth. Then we add two packages of vanilla instant pudding and a half teaspoon of cinnamon and beat it for a minute or two. We spread that into a ready-made graham cracker pie crust, you know, the, the kind you buy at the market, and top it with a can of apple pie filling that we've mixed with another half teaspoon of cinnamon and that's it. Give it a few hours in the fridge, sprinkle on a couple tablespoons of slivered almonds, and we've got a creamy apple pie that works any time of the year. But it's especially welcome on a hot summer day because everything is done for us. Uh, the crust, the, the, the filling, the, the instant pudding. Yeah, all the hard work's pre-done. And if you'd like the recipe, just send a self-addressed stamped envelope marked Apple Pie in Summer and we'll get it back to you for getting ready to do the big work of it, which is taking all the credit for your apple-topped cream pie. Maybe, maybe call it apple cheesecake. Nah, doesn't matter what you call it. It's smooth, it's homey, no work, no hot kitchen, completely, ooh, it's so good. Mm, it is, and be sure to join us tomorrow when Mr. Food takes his talents into the beverage department. You won't want to miss that one, Keith. Hundreds of thousands of Western New Yorkers sampled a taste of buffalo this past weekend, and officials now say it was even a bigger success than they had first hoped for. Over 300,000 people attended the Tasty Two-Day event in downtown Buffalo again. It was the 12th annual taste and featured a wide variety of foods from 53 local restaurants. Coming up next, breathe right and allow your spouse to sleep at night. Sheila Mahoney has the latest in the fight to end snoring. Also, do hospital maternity wards have doors that revolve too quickly? Are new mothers being pushed out the hospital door? 
And a little later, a convicted child molester is on the loose and may still be in their area. So why are these Rochester parents throwing a party? We'll have their story coming up on Eyewitness News at 5. When two products are the same, you don't pay more than you have to. It's the same with home equity loans. Why pay more than you have to? At Personal Mortgage, we offer a variable rate as low as one half percent below the prime rate. That stays one half percent below prime, even as the prime changes. We checked our competitors, even banks. Their best rate is prime or higher. You wouldn't buy something for more. Why borrow that way? Homeowners, call 1-800-DIAL-PMC. When you need money, it's personal. It's a party at Friendly's Restaurants. What's the occasion? This year, it's Friendly's 60th anniversary, and almost everyone's invited. Right now, enjoy a very friendly deal. Buy any entree salad, like the new Caribbean chicken salad, and get a festive strawberry sundae free. With pleasure. Then take home Friendly's premium ice cream and frozen yogurt, just $5 for any two half gallons, in flavors galore. So come on in to Friendly's, where it's always a party. On August 8th, you might need tissues. You might be tickled. You might rejoice. Thank you, Jesus. Or you might need a chair. Congratulations, Mrs. Clearinghouse. And all of America might see it. Because on August 8th, the Publishers Clearinghouse Prize Patrol will surprise another million dollar winner live on TV. So enter now because you might win. Oh! Aesthetic Associate Center is accredited as an ambulatory plastic surgery facility. Surgery performed at the center by board-certified plastic surgeons may include cosmetic facial surgery, nasal surgery, aesthetic and reconstructive breast surgery, body contouring, skin tumor surgery, and other procedures. The dental staff performs adult and child dentistry, including dental implants, porcelain veneers, crown and bridge, bleaching, bonding, and orthodontia. For more information, call 839-1700 or 1-800-GREAT-LOOK. They may look a little funny, but these strips could put an end to your snoring problems. On our Family HealthCast Focus tonight, catching flies, sawing wood. By any name, snoring can cause some sleepless nights for you and for the person you sleep with. Well, if you thought your case was hopeless, think again. Family Health reporter Sheila Mahoney says relief may come in one small strip. If this sound is something all too familiar, take heart. You're not alone. Cindy Belts is a snorer who left others sleepless. When we'd go on family outings, nobody wanted to sleep in the same room with me. Now it's not a problem. It wasn't a late night jab in the ribs that made the difference for Cindy, but this small strip that looks like nothing more than a Band-Aid. It's called Breathe Right. Does it open up the uh, sinuses? Uh, it doesn't do anything for sinuses. It works on the external valve, on the nose. It's just an adhesive pad embedded with two plastic strips, so it has a certain amount of spring. When placed on the soft tissue of the nose, it pulls the nasal passages apart and makes it easier to breathe. Right. St. Joseph's Hospital pulmonologist Alex uh, Gelfer treats right. patients with it sleeping disorders. He says the strips the have produced results. They don't have any medication in it. Uh, there are not many side effects reported except for skin irritation or sometimes peeling the skin when they try to remove uh, this nasal strip early in the morning. Snoring aside, the strips have also become chic among football players. You'll remember during the playoffs, several players sported them. They look like band-aids, but actually those strips help the players breathe, especially when they had to wear a mouth guard. San Francisco 49er Jerry Rice. I think it's contagious because I have had teammates to come up to me and say, well, Jerry, why are you wearing that? And uh, when I explain everything to them, uh, you know, they're willing to give it a try, and it works. From football season to allergy season, if you're congested and stuffed up, it may not hurt to give these a try. They're inexpensive and drug-free, nothing to make you drowsy. And if you're not snoring anymore, you might just get a good night's sleep after all. With the Family Health Cast, I'm Sheila Mahoney. So if you think you need some, you can find the nasal strips in the coffin cold section of most local drug stores. Five dollars should buy you a package of about ten. Kathleen? Salaries for medical specialists appear to be on the rise. According to today's issue of Modern Health Care, pay for doctors in 12 common specialties rose an average 3.5% last year. 
topping the earning charts radiologists with salaries ranging from 165000 to, to nearly $292,000 annually. Radiologists are followed by anesthesiologists and cardiologists. The lowest earners, family practitioners, pediatricians, psychiatrists, and internal medicine specialists. Many new parents are not blaming their doctors, rather their insurance agents, for sick babies. Hospital stays for newborns and their moms are getting shorter all the time. For an insurance agency, it's a money saver, but some say it endangers children's lives. What in effect has happened is that the insurance companies have con conducted an experiment with our children's lives. It is important to remember that pregnancy is the single greatest reason for hospitalization. Costs went up 35% between 1989 and 1993. The state of New York is currently legislating a longer hospital stay or home health care visits. No offense to all the Michaels and the Jessicas out there, but according to a new study now, your names are no longer the most popular among new parents. After 35 years of riding high on the charts, the name Michael has now been replaced in popularity by the name Jacob. Jacob is followed in order of popularity by Tyler, Austin, Michael, Matthew, Nicholas, Brandon, Zachary, Joshua, and Andrew. Now, for the girls, the name Jessica is edged out by Emily. The rest of the top ten are Ashley, Samantha, Sarah, Jessica, Taylor, Megan, Amanda, Hannah, and finally, Elizabeth. Coming up next on Eyewitness News at 5, the latest from Los Angeles and Union, South Carolina, as one of the most highly visible murder trials enters a new stage and another is just getting off the ground. Also, find out why these Rochester parents threw a party over the weekend, even though a convicted child molester from their neighborhood is still on the loose. And later, she doesn't look a day over 16, but Barbie is celebrating a birthday. We'll tell you which one and who was invited to the party. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Summer of Weinstein, these are some of the stories we'll have for you on Eyewitness News at 6. The victim of a recent explosion in Cheektowaga has died. We'll have details. And there was an eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball confrontation today between the NFTA and labor unions. We'll have a report. Those stories and more at 6. We'll see you then. I'd do it in a second. The fans will dig it. They've waited long enough. I've just got to get the other lads to agree. I think I can convince them. I'll say, lads, the time has come to eat our pizza. Rust first. Good idea, we got cool. yeah. Stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. With cheese baked into a new thinner crust, you'll want to eat it crust first. Now with free garlic dipping sauce. Wrong lads. Large is $9.99. Never again. I'll never go back to hydrocortisone for my dry skin itch. I switched to lanocaine. New medical testing on itch nerve shows the direct action of lanocaine relieves itching faster and keeps working better than hydrocortisone. Look, in the first crucial minute, lanocaine gave faster itch relief. And the relief really lasts. Over time, lanocaine kept working better. Fast relief that lasts. I like that. Lanocaine not only relieves itching faster, it keeps working better than hydrocortisone. The fun you keep coming back to. I'll blind myself, I'll blind myself with mom. Have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon? Or ask At Burger King, everyone's singing the praises of Disney's Pocahontas, Can you filled with action, music, and romance. And they're really into the Pocahontas glasses at Burger King. Just 99 cents each with any value meal. Each one with a memorable scene from the movie. You've got to get all four. You might even want to use them to drink from. 99 cent Pocahontas glasses only at Burger King. Get your burger's worth. After weeks of testimony aimed at proving he's guilty of murder, O.J. Simpson's defense team is finally presenting its case. The first witness, Simpson's daughter, Arnell. Ms. Simpson says she moved to her father's estate after finishing college. Defense attorney Johnny Cochran today asked her about why her father might not have been ready when a limo picked him up on the night of the murders. 
She would usually do everything last minute. You, you've seen this yourself? Yes. And describe that, doing things last minute. Um, well, there's always been a, an ongoing joke within the family that uh, we'd always say, Dad, you have to get ready. And he'd always say, I'll, I'll get ready before you will be. And I would always, like, prepare an hour before, and he'll, like, get dressed in the last 15 minutes before we would have to leave. This is He's done this for years. Arnell says she began to cry when the detectives told her Nicole had been murdered. She says she talked to her father on the telephone and he was more upset than she had ever heard him. Jury selection got underway today in Union, South Carolina for the murder trial of Susan Smith. She's charged with drowning her two young sons last October. Officials started questioning a pool of about 170 potential jurors. They hope to narrow it down to the final 12 by week's end. A competency hearing for Smith was also held today to assure that she understands the proceedings and can assist in her own defense. In Toronto, Paul Bernardo's trial adjourned early today so a jury member could attend his mother's funeral. Carla Homolka has been undergoing cross-examination by Bernardo's attorney and she will likely face more questions tomorrow about her role in the sexual assault and death of 14-year-old Leslie Mahaffey. Bernardo is charged with killing Mahaffey and 15-year-old Kristen French. In Cloverdale, California, the trial is now set to begin tomorrow for the man accused in the death of 12-year-old Polly Kloss. Richard Davis told police that he was in a drug-induced haze when he kidnapped the girl from her own bedroom in Petaluma, California, back in 1993. Police say Davis strangled the girl to try and cover his tracks. Davis finally led police to her body. Thousands of people joined in a search that received nationwide publicity. Davis could get the death penalty if he is convicted. When Patrick DeStaffen was convicted for molesting children in his Rochester neighborhood, parents were relieved. This weekend, they planned a block party to celebrate his imprisonment. But celebration turned to disappointment when DeStaffen disappeared. And despite the manhunt going on around them, the party went on anyway. Karen Hepp reports. Most of these children haven't played outside for days, and most of their parents haven't slept. You do have it! All right! Yeah. Parents' plan was block party to celebrate Patrick DeStaffen being behind bars and away from their children. Although that didn't happen, parents still feel their kids needed the release. Neighbor Jody Lysak was away on vacation. She didn't know about DeStaffen's escape. I was shocked. I was, I was very upset. Uh, on Wednesday, I was toasting his imprisonment. And to come home and find a flood of messages, I was very aggravated and very angry. But Pat is upset about the party. Her 14-year-old son was one of DeStaffen's victims. She thinks this block party is absurd. Why? Why? <laughs> Why are we celebrating when, you know, we should be looking for this guy? There's nothing to be celebrating. But not all of the parents feel that way. For every step that he takes outside his house, that's every step more that we have to watch our kids. The party is as much for the parents as it is for the kids. They, too, share a common bond now. We have to talk to him about it. He has questions about sex that we've talked to him about, which at the age that he's at, he shouldn't have to know all this stuff. What's so hard for these people is understanding why Patrick DeStaffman is running free when their children are still being held prisoners. Karen Hepp for CNN. 39-year-old Patrick DeStefan faces an 8 to 24-year jail term. Keith? Well, the silver bullet is biting the bullet when it comes to health care benefits. The beer company, long known for the conservative philosophy of its owners, has now extended an olive branch to some of its employees. Adolf Coors and company has quietly now extended full benefits to unmarried domestic partners of employees. This latest move includes gay couples. When Eyewitness News at 5 continues, the Bills have signed their quarterback of the future. And a big week for local golf fans as two tournaments hit Western New York. Coming up next on Eyewitness Sports. Still ahead, some of the best dressed are in New Mexico. Best dressed Barbies, that is. The story is coming up a little later on Eyewitness News at 5. They call this a family restaurant? No family could afford to eat here. I'm surprised they don't charge you to sit down. So why not try Ponderosa? You always get your money's worth here. We bundle every meal with our all-you-can-eat grand buffet and Sunday bar. Now, a new larger portion of our charbroiled sirloin tips dinner. Value bundled with grand buffet and Sunday bar is just $6.99.
Good food. Great price. There's got to be a catch. There is. You got to come to Ponderosa. Ponderosa. It's time you got your money's worth. <laughs> Fruit juicy. Suddenly, from Hawaiian Punch, new Typhoon Blasters in three wild new flavors. Torrentially tasty orange, bursting bunches of grapes, and furiously fruity tropical fruit wow. with vitamin C and calcium. They're more nutritious than the leading fruit drink. Hey, how about a nice Hawaiian Punch? Sure. New Typhoon Blasters. Flavors ah. with punch. <laughs> Some clothes you just don't want to put in the dryer, so you hang them up to dry. And that's the toughest test of any fabric softener, even Downy. So if you think any mid-priced brand can give you the softness of Downy, put your choice on the line. Look, those brands can leave clothes feeling stiffer after they've been line dried. But Downy gives your clothes a softer, fluffy feel. Come on in to the most fluffy softness. Come on in to Downy. Riverside Men's Shop is having an explosion of savings during our unbelievable summer clearance sale going on now till the end of the month. You'll save 20 to 50% on absolutely everything in the store. Riverside continues their policy of free custom alterations and their four-month interest-free charge account even at sale time. Hurry into Riverside today where we'll fit you just right with 20 to 50% off everything from now till the end of the month. Riverside Men's Shop fits you just right. A couple of big days for local professional sports. Sabres and Bills both in the news. Lots of Bills action coming yeah, a lot, up. Too much sport. I might take the week off. There's so much going on. You're I just think. a little bit exhausted. It's just Monday. Already. It's only Monday at 5 here. The Bills expect to have all hands on deck by Friday, the first day of the 1995 training camp. They got word from Cornelius Meta today that the veteran linebacker will report to camp on time this Friday. He's the team's franchise free agent. His contract offer is $3 million a year. And second round draft pick Todd Collins has agreed to a contract he has signed. And Bennett is ready ready to report. They'll have all the rookie draft picks and their franchise free agent ready to go on Friday. Baseball's All-Stars are assembling in Texas, getting ready for the All-Star game, which you can see right here on News Channel 7 tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. And the Stanley Cup champion New Jersey Devils being honored at the White House today, a special ceremony with President Clinton. It is a big week for local golf, and it's the first day of festivities for the Nike Buffalo Open. The Nike Tour will play here Thursday through Sunday. Today on the course of Briarwood, a challenge match, the PGA Tour against the Nike Nike Tour, that's veteran PGA player David Edwards up against the top money man for the Nike Tour, Tom Shearer. They both like the course. That's nice. Nice golf course. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, I think they probably had a little rain here last week, so it's a little soft, but it uh, uh, should be a good tournament this week. I think it's a course you got to hit it pretty straight on. It's kind of narrow. There's some rough out here, which is going to be tough, uh, and you got to make some putts. These greens so far have been pretty undulated and pretty difficult. So I think someone's got to hit it pretty straight, hit the greens, and, and make the pots. Course is great. Uh, when the Arnold Palmer Group took over, they brought their uh, agronomist in, Jim Ellison, and he's been working here for the last three or four weeks, and uh, the course is in probably the best condition it's ever been in. Tomorrow they've got the Nike Shootout, a nine-hole contest at Briarwood, and a long drive contest for pros and amateurs at the course tomorrow also. Winston Cup Racing makes its annual Upstate New York appearance next month. Today, some top names from the Winston Cup circuit made a stop in Buffalo to talk about Budweiser at the Glen on Sunday, August 13th. The legendary Winston Cup driver, Cale Yarborough, now an owner. And his car is the RCA Ford Thunderbird, driven by Jeremy Mayfield, one of the top young drivers on the circuit. They're in Williamsville with a car today talking about Bud at the Glen. Watkins Glen, you know, is, a, is an old traditional racetrack. Got a lot of uh, history behind it, and... Uh, we, uh, we we're always looking forward to, to, to coming here with the Winston Cup car. Of course, Jeremy has very little experience on road courses yet, and uh, but we hope that uh, he'll run the entire race there, and after this race, he'll have plenty of experience. We've had several good runs, and we've had several bad ones. So Winston Cup racing is a tough deal. you gotta got to try to build consistency where you're there every week and not just run good a couple weeks and then bad another. But we're working real hard on it, and uh, our team's really headed in the right direction at this time. Kel Yarborough will be honored on qualifying day for Bud at the Glen. The Winston Cup racers take over the Watkins Glen circuit on Sunday, August 13th. And
That's sports. Now, Johnny, it's the first time we've been together since the big news over the weekend. McGill what do you think about this McGillney and Howard Chuck gone? Well, two different deals, uh, both money-related, actually. The Sabres, uh, if they weren't a small market team before, at least didn't act like one. They're acting like one now. They just can't afford these guys. It's, it's not good for the fans. I don't think there's anything positive out of it for the fans anyway. Well, let's see what happens because you never know. Maybe this is what they need, something to get them sparked and get winning again. They're definitely turning the page, that's for sure. Right. Thanks, John. Yep. Business headlines tonight. Hats off to one Western New York manufacturing company, the Dunlop Tire Corporation today, received the Made in Erie County Award. The award is given by the county to recognize local companies which do business here in the U.S. and around the world. So Dunlop employs over 1,500 people in Erie County and has been here in Western New York since 1920. Thank you very much. And Chrysler Corporation says it's going to begin replacing faulty rear door latches on more than 4 million minivans. Minivan owners can start making their appointments at their dealers September the 4th to get that repair work done. Race car drivers depend on their cars for peak engine performance, so why should your car be any different? Tonight on the Car Care Connection, Tom Torbjornson has some tips on keeping your engine running like pros. Hi, Tom Torbjornson here for the Car Care Connection. Let's talk a little bit about how engine performance systems have evolved. First, we have a, a sample of a set of ignition points here. What did the points do? The points opened and closed and controlled the spark that sparked your spark plugs, causing the engine to run. This is a General Motors application called a Uniset. You know, the points are located right here, and this is the condenser. Right. Things have changed considerably. We also have spark plug wires, which are still present in today's systems. Let's talk about engine control computers and what has happened in the change. Here we have an engine control computer. The engine control computer has built within it parameters within which the car is supposed to run. It is fed information by these simple sensors here. This is an oxygen sensor. It reads the amount of oxygen that's in the exhaust and then adjusts the fuel accordingly, whether it needs to be richer or leaner. Here we have a throttle position sensor, another sensor that provides information to the computer so that it can adjust it so that your car runs to its optimum performance. And here we have an IACV motor, and this is simply an engine control. This adjusts the idle. Boy, things have come a long way, baby, huh? For the Car Care Connection, I'm Tom Torbjornson. Till next time, keep rolling. Tom is back Wednesday to figure out your filters. And looking for your car care questions, send them to Tom in care of WKBW-TV, and he will answer them for you. And checking in on the close of Wall Street for you tonight, the Dow Jones Industrial Average today dropped a few points. It dropped altogether about half a point to finish off at 4,702.39. Again, almost record trading volume today, 409 million shares changed hands. Just a gorgeous day out there today. Will we have another one tomorrow? Linda Pellegrino is going to let us know. Her AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. Plus, a little later, the Out of This World Weekend Movie Rundown. Hold on to your seat. Hold on to your hat. When you go out west, we don't hold back. Artie's subs suit a big taste, because we don't hold back on the meat like some other guys do. And now all our subs are under two bucks. A real small price on some real big subs. This price won't last, get your pony in gear. Look for the hat, because it's better out here. Any sub under two bucks, only at Arby's. Ooh, my first banana nut That looks great. There's no taste like home-baked, home-baked taste. You can enjoy that same delicious taste in a cereal. Banana Nut Crunch. Home taste. Real banana baked into crunchy oat clusters, chopped walnuts, and crispy wheat flakes, too. Who do you think baked this, Mom? There's just no taste like home-baked. Banana Nut Crunch cereal. From Post. So, you think you gotta go to the gym to keep in shape? You may be getting more of a workout than you know. The perfect reason to be drinking Crystal Light. It's full of light, juicy flavor. Five little calories. No guilt, no sacrifice. So, whatever you're doing to keep in shape, keep doing it. New tropical passions from Crystal Light. Treat yourself right.
Howard's idea of a thrilling vacation is a little different. Hope we didn't miss anyone. Get away for a couple of days. Come celebrate 125 summers of real thrills at Cedar Point. To save up to $200, call 1-800-BEST-FUN for your free family getaway guide. 1-800-BEST-FUN. What a wonderful day out there today. Finally, the nice weather's back after that fall-like weekend we had. That's right, Keith and Kathleen. It almost seems like we reverted back a little bit to autumn, didn't it? Or else we kind of jumped ahead. I can't figure out which one. But you're right. Today was the day we had hoped for all weekend long. It was a gorgeous day. You knew it. First thing uh, waking up this morning. And it's going to stay nice as far as the temperature. In fact, it's going to get a little too nice, I think, because we really have some warm weather getting ready to move back into western New York. I, you thought we might have been done with it? Uh-uh. Looks like we have a big stretch of it coming back. And it may be here as early as, well, we'll be up in the 80s by Wednesday. We could be hitting 90, folks, by the end of the week. We'll go to our 3D cloud cover, and we'll let you know what's happening. First of all, it looks a little gray out over the lake, and it does appear that with a weak disturbance moving through western New York between tonight and tomorrow morning, we could see maybe just a 30% chance of a thunder shower cropping up almost anywhere. Now, it was pretty sunny all day long in the city downtown. It appears that we have a cloud cover, and, it, and I would not be surprised. It's just gotten dark so quickly uh, that we uh, see a couple of showers here and there. But that's it. You can see there's nothing major in this organ any or anything organized uh, on these clouds just something that's passing through the big system is a big high pressure system that's right here in the middle of the country this one is just sitting here gathering heat waiting to make its push to the east and as it does what it will do is give us a super day again for tomorrow lots of sunshine temperature high up around 80 degrees and then with high pressure sticking around once it pretty much moves over our area of the country it stays and the heat builds and it looks like again temperatures just climb and climb and climb Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now, although we said it was gray downtown and it looks kind of gray out over the lake, you'll notice this is the area composite radar of earlier. These in the last couple of hours, everything has cleared out. It's looking pretty good. There's just a couple of little spots that you see kind of creep back into the forecast. So if you will notice one of those little spots coming your way, that might be just an isolated shower or a thunder shower. And again, this is the picture that was a while ago, so we're not going to worry too much about that. Our weather eye around the country shows just a little bit of activity right here in western New York, but most of it all oh, just covering the state of Florida down there. And if we look way out west, we'll notice just a little bit here. But really, the middle of the country is what we're concerned about, and that's what's going to give us very warm and dry weather. Probably as soon as tomorrow afternoon, the dryness begins and our threat of showers pretty much disappears. There's the high. There it is moving in. How will it affect us for Wednesday's forecast? Uh-huh. High and dry. Lots of sun, lots of high pressure, and that means we've got a great stream of days coming but it could be really a little too warm for most of us here in western New York we start talking anything above 80 82 degrees and a lot of folks get uncomfortable so let's have a look for tonight AccuWeather is calling for a pretty decent night to sleep the low of 58 degrees thunder shower in some spots but that's going to end early we're not going to worry about that for tomorrow another one like today the high of 80 mixture of clouds and sun and a nice cool breeze off the lake that's fine very comfortable tomorrow night low of 58 again and then we'll go to the five-day forecast because the heat is on after Tuesday, Wednesday's high 84, Thursday up to 86, Wednesday, rather Friday, 88 degrees, and uh, Saturday, yep, that's plenty of hot sun with a high of 90. Wow, we'll tell you how to keep cool in the next couple of days. Always heading by the lake is a, re is a really good idea. But with that, the heat, again, is coming back to western New York, so get ready. Keith and Kathleen, this is the season for it. Thanks, Linda. Great weekends are great for hitting the movies. Here's a look at the weekend's top grossing films. Apollo 13 is still orbiting at number one with $19 million. Species debuted at number two with $17 million. And First Night opened at number three with $11 million in box office sales. Pocahontas and Batman Forever rounded out the top five. From movie stars to shooting stars and everything in between. When we come back, Barbies, Barbies, and more Barbies. Stay with us. Is your child protected for the future? Gerber, the baby people you've known since you were an infant, offers you a way to help with that protection through their Grow Up Plan for Children. It's a $5,000 cash value insurance program that costs less than 11 cents a day. 
At age 21, that protection doubles to $10,000 with absolutely no increase in premiums. In addition to automatically doubling at age 21, the plan also guarantees the right to $50,000 of insurance by age 28, regardless of health or occupation. So call now for your free information package. Any child under 13 years of age is eligible. No medical examination is necessary. Simply answer a few questions. As a special feature, your first month's premium is $1. The Gerber Life Grow Up Plan. To show you care, call now. 1-800-543-1800. That's 1-800-543-1800. The information package is free. There is no obligation. This offer is available to parents and grandparents only. That number again is 1-800-543-1800. We could move the grilled shrimp over. <laughs> That's kind of crowding the scampi. How did Red Lobster fit 30 shrimp on one plate for just $9.99? It wasn't easy. The fried shrimp goes here. But what about the lemon pepper? It's overflowing with all your favorites. Grilled shrimp, fried shrimp, Savory scampi and lemon pepper. 30 shrimp, just $9.99 for a short time. So hurry. Now, where are we going to put the lemon? We even squeezed in a kid's shrimp combo for $1.99 at Red Lobster. You don't have money to burn. So you save with a low price detergent. And for this tough stain, you add a free treater. There's only one problem. These two products together cost more and do less than this product alone, Ultra Era. This pre-treater plus this big cap full of low-priced detergent can't beat this stain. But just a small dose of Ultra Era cuts right through. That's proof you can take to the bank. Ultra Era, the power tool for stains. Well, you've heard of deadheads and sitting ducks. How about deadhead listening ducks? That's right, deadheads weren't the only ones at last night's Grateful Dead show in Chicago. This mother duck and her seven ducklings have taken up camp just behind center stage. Where are they? There they are. The mother duck probably didn't expect things to get this loud. They're pretty cool. They just kept on rocking all through the show. And finally tonight, happy birthday, Barbie. America's favorite doll is 36 years old today, and collectors from all over the nation gathered in Albuquerque, New Mexico over the weekend for the party. People of all ages came to look at the many faces of Barbie ever since the 1950s. The doll has gone from vintage to glamorous and now to even space age. And you can bet you'll be seeing more of Barbie into the future. A spokesperson, spokesperson for the company says sales for the doll topped one billion dollars last year and they litter kate's floor that's a lot of barbies <laughs> that's it for eyewitness news at five irv is next at six we'll see you tonight at 11. good night